DMZ Season 2 is going to be interesting. We need to talk about what's coming, what's likely to happen, and what the team behind the mode should probably be doing. So far, DMZ has been a revelation for me. It's a mode where you can engage in battles with enemy teams, you can complete increasingly bizarre and difficult challenges whilst fighting off those enemies, set out on contract missions, and finally wrap it all up neatly by exfilling in peace. Well, that last part isn't always in peace, it gets very tense most of the time. But the mode has been all that I've played for the last month or so, and Season 2 is just around the corner, it's a couple of weeks away, so let's discuss. Drop a like on this video if you're enjoying DMZ, and if you're not subscribed by the way, go and tickle that button and help the channel keep growing on towards 900,000 subscribers, and there'll be plenty more DMZ content coming your way. Season 2 of Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2 and DMZ is set to launch in early February. We don't have an exact date for that launch yet, but the Season 1 Battle Pass timer finishes in early February, so it's going to be around that time. There's obviously going to be plenty of new content in Season 2 for all of the different aspects of this massive game, but one thing for DMZ specifically that I think is really going to change things up is a new area, a new map, a new location. So far, we've got two locations to play DMZ on. We have Al Masra, the large desert map that's shared with Warzone 2 Battle Royale, and then we have Building 21. That was introduced with Season 1 Reloaded, and it's a DMZ-specific location. This biohazard lab gave us something completely different to Al Masra. It's a much smaller, infantry-focused, close-quarters location set in a mysterious crater or bunker. There's no minimap available in Building 21, that raises the stakes of combat and player numbers are reduced to just 12, so there's 4 teams of 3 maximum in Building 21. To find your way around, because you've got no minimap, you have to use physical maps placed on the walls near staircases and the difficulty of the AI builds up during a match, and it reaches a peak as the countdown begins for you to exfil using a few different elevator locations. Building 21 is clearly supposed to focus more on the PvP element of DMZ. And right now, there are no missions tied to this map, which is something we'll talk about in a moment. With Season 2, adding to Al Masra and Building 21, rumours are circling that a third location is about to arrive, an island map. This is going to be shared with Warzone 2 Battle Royale. It will likely be a Resurgence-style map, and taking what we know from those maps in the previous Warzone, Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep, we're likely getting another totally different DMZ experience this time. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you the image that we have of the map. It was taken down by Activision, and I don't fancy taking any heat from them myself. But the map appears to feature the very iconic castle map from World at War in the center. And you'll have recently seen this map remastered in Call of Duty Vanguard. The island features several other POIs, including a power plant, a shipwreck, there's greenhouses, there's a beach club, a port, a water treatment plant, and a larger town area as well. And to me, the map looks more in line with Fortune's Keep from Warzone 1, which was a little bit larger than Rebirth Island, but still very much what you'd call a small map for Battle Royale, which for DMZ means it's going to be a lot smaller than Al Masra, but larger and more expansive than Building 21. That to me says that this new island map is probably going to be another location that sees more PvP action than Al Masra does, simply due to the smaller size of the map and players being closer together in general. Right now we've got no information on player numbers, but with the Al Masra map being capped at 60 players and Building 21 at just 12 players, I'd expect this larger than Building 21 island map to sit somewhere in the middle, so maybe 24, maybe up to 30 players. 30 might be a stretch, but I think 24 would probably sit quite well. And that would certainly speed up the gameplay pacing compared to Almazra, but it would keep it tense towards the end of matches as well. And it would also mean we'd have three maps overall. Almazra, the large one, the open one, where gameplay is a bit more sporadic, where you don't know if you're going to engage with enemy players, but you can get lots of your missions done. And then you've got Building 21, which is almost entirely PvP because everyone's really close together. And then we've got this new island map in the middle, which will probably have some PvP, some PvE, lots of missions to complete. It just sits somewhere in the middle. Seems to fit right. So alongside this new map, I am fully expecting new faction missions to be added to DMZ with Season 2 as well. This is something that's already been confirmed to us by the developers through Charlie Intel, one of the big Call of Duty news accounts on Twitter. With a new map being added and Building 21 being added not that long ago, there is definitely room for new faction missions crafted specifically around those locations, with potentially more added for Al Masra as well. For Building 21 specifically, I'd love to see some Shadow Company faction missions 
Martians, since they are the AI faction present in the building, and their boss Velikan roams the halls with his grenade launcher. The fact that we didn't get new faction missions when Building 21 launched was disappointing, but perhaps now people know the map better, thanks to a few weeks worth of playtime over the holidays, now is the perfect time to be adding those new faction missions to give people a reason to keep jumping back into that smaller map other than the PvP and stealing other people's weapons for your contraband stash. And then as for the island map, I'm pretty sure we'll get faction missions for that since it's going to be part of the narrative of DMZ, adding that new location just like Building 21 was. And speaking of narrative, some people in the community are now theorizing that Building 21 is actually linked to an old friend, Verdansk. At the beginning of the Building 21 matches, for a few seconds in the top left corner, you can see a map of the building. It's not a mini map, it's like, a, it's like an overview map and it's sitting in a huge crater from some sort of impact. Now on Twitter, Hotel6 did do some overlay work and using the external elements of the map where you can see different roads and trees around the edges, they managed to match up the Verdansk nuke impact site with this crater, which could mean Building 21 is on Verdansk. People are now saying that at some point in the future, we might get some kind of post-apocalyptic post-nuke Verdansk location for DMZ, which, if true, would make me cry tears of happiness. But it is worth remembering, that is all speculation at the moment, so take it with a pinch of salt. So outside of those things, there's plenty more the team behind DMZ could be doing, and probably should be doing, to improve the mode for Season 2 and beyond. Now, I'm not being unreasonable here, I know these things take time, and I know the developers will have been listening to the community since launch on what they'd like to see, but I think there are some really easy wins that the developers could work towards that would improve the DMZ gameplay experience and just give you more incentive to exfil and care about your character in-game. We already know that the team is working on a dynamic weather system and potentially a day-night cycle for the game, which is awesome news. That would definitely throw some variety into the gameplay and spice things up. But there needs to be more incentive to keep playing DMZ. In the single player campaign, Modern Warfare 2 has a crafting system, which I think could be perfect for DMZ. It'd give you reason to start looting all sorts of common items from across the map. Just things like, you know, the toothpaste, the jumper cables, the bandages, things that have no use outside of a few missions in the faction mission tree. Getting those items into a crafting system and potentially allowing players to craft items outside of the game or, I don't know if this could work, but even inside of the game using the system that's built into the single player, that would be pretty awesome. Instead of solely focusing on the faction missions, instead you could do some crafting runs with your friends for items that you need to build up in your stash for future runs. Maybe you could craft certain items and then take them back into the DMZ. I'd love to be able to loot a load of scrap metal, enough to craft a keychain for my character, and then have that as a separate key storage location on my character in-game so I don't have to carry keys in my backpack, which take up a huge amount of potential space. Then there's the potential of lootable attachments, which is actually something that seemed to be part of Warzone 2's plans back in the summer of 2022. At the COD Next event, buy stations in the Battle Royale version of the game had options for you to purchase attachments from the buy stations. So I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that that feature was removed with the intention of adding it back into DMZ in the future. It'd be awesome if we could loot or even purchase attachments for our contraband weapons and change up how they work instead of being stuck with the very specific build that the enemy player chose who you took it from. That'd also give you incentive to extract beyond just completing your faction missions. Imagine you have an almost blank weapon in your contraband stash, and then during a match you manage to collect, I don't know, like a suppressor, an optic, and an extended magazine. Extract with those, and then you can add them onto your contraband weapon in your stash, giving you a better weapon to go in with next time. That would be a really cool feature. Like I say, I'm not expecting this to be added like instantly. These things will take time, but it does seem like these are some good things to work towards that would definitely improve the DMZ experience. Season 2 is going to be a really telling point for DMZ. The developers have now shown off this new concept within Call of Duty, this extraction shooter mode that's very different from things we've had before. And for the most part, it's been really good fun to play. But Season 2 is going to be a moment where what they show off is probably how they plan to support this game mode moving forwards. 
I'm not expecting huge gameplay changes and massive new features in Season 2. I know we've just had the holidays, and I'm guessing those kind of things take a lot more work. DMZ is also designed in a certain way, and the developers are probably going to want to toe the line all the way through because that's how they intended the game mode to be. But there is certainly room for improvement, and there's definitely room for greater depth. More reasons to extract, more reasons to care about my stash and my character, cooler, rare items that have limited quantity, along with brand new locations, of course. But that's about it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with official Season 2 information as soon as it drops, probably in a couple of weeks' time. But thanks for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you soon.